Welcome to Creative Bits. Hey everybody, this is Christian Gabriel and I'm back with another tutorial video. This time it's all about artificial intelligence. There's some pretty cool stuff going on. We'll see where it leads, but I'm about to show you the new generative fill feature in Photoshop. Now, what I'm about to do is going to be good, not perfect, but it's going to be good enough for most people's uses. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here and let's get this thing started. Right now, we have the contextual taskbar right here. For some people, this is going to get a little annoying having this kind of pop up wherever you are. Of course, if I go here to these little three dots, the more uh, features, the more options right here, I can drop this down and hide the bar if I'd like. I could reset the bar's position. I could also pin this bar in another place of the screen, which would be really nice because sometimes it gets a little annoying down here. This is a great thing though, because this bar will change, the contextual taskbar will change based on whatever you have selected, whatever kind of mode you're in, there's certain kind of modes that may trigger certain things. So this is a pretty cool thing. So right now, because it's sensing this photograph right here, uh, it has this little select subject and remove background. And yes, that's exactly what it will do using AI. It will just jump in there and try and do stuff for you. So that's pretty cool stuff right there. Now, is it perfect? No. And any one who's worked with Photoshop, who's tried to select hair, hair is kind of like the holy grail that separates amateurs from pros. And so the better you can select hair, I mean, it's just like everything else is much, much easier. So right now, uh, if I jump in here and I say, let's say remove background, now I can do that. If I click on that button right there, there it is, it's gonna go through and it'll try and select it. Now, this is pretty horrific, as you can see, very messed up around the edge here, Although you'd be surprised how many people would probably think this is just fine. You kind of slap a background behind her and uh, it might be okay with a background, but you could see we have problems with our hair, some disconnects here. So usually if the person has hair, uh, especially hair that is kind of, you have some flyaways and things like that, uh, you're gonna need to go a little bit further than just one click. Now in the future, that may change. In fact, I can see it changing already very quickly, but this is pretty cool. Now, if you just have that hair helmet look, no flyaways, everything's pretty simple, uh, it's gonna be much easier to select your subject. So right now I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna bring back the original image. Now, once again, I could also click on select subject. So if I go down here, click on select subject, this is awesome. And it's gonna jump in and try and select most of her right here. Once again, we got some flyaways and things. And to be honest with you, a lot of flyaways kind of melt into the background. They're kind of unnecessary. So it's not a huge crime if you lose them. Most of the time, if we do lose them and we want them, um, you know, most artists are going to draw them back in. Okay, so right now I am selecting her. And you'll see now this beautiful contextual taskbar is giving me a different set of selections. Right away, some of the most popular are gonna be this right here called a layer mask. Now I am a person that likes to work non-destructively. When I'm training anyone or if I'm talking to anyone or advising them, I am a huge non-destructive feature person. Uh, so I only teach non-destructive workflows. Destructive workflows are lame. Uh, they're okay. You know, I guess if you get a little lazy, uh, that's okay. But non-destructive workflows are much more efficient uh, professionally. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people don't use them, and that's okay. If your artwork is totally awesome and you, you don't use any of these great tools, then that's okay. That's cool. Uh, for me, uh, I see basically non-destructive working as a way of making things more efficient if things do go wrong and you wanna go back and change things and things like that. So my first non-destructive thing to do, even before I would have maybe selected something, uh, would be to convert my photograph right here into a smart object. Now, a smart object will protect your photograph 
from getting damaged, basically. So it doesn't allow any erasing uh, or at least any destructive erasing. It doesn't allow a lot of those types of issues. Uh, and if I scale it down and up, uh, you're not going to get the type of resolution loss because it saves the original resolution of the photograph. So right now, I'm just going to protect my photograph by going over to the right here, right clicking, and then saying convert to smart object right in the corner here. And there it is. It is now converted to a smart object. It is now protected. Now, you'll notice that the selection doesn't go in the smart object, and that's because uh, selection really doesn't belong in anything. It doesn't belong to a particular layer. It doesn't go into smart objects like that. Uh, a selection is kind of a temporary thing. Uh, it kind of is just something that floats on its own and can be applied to multiple layers or single layers, uh, whichever one you have clicked on. So that's why when I wrapped it as a smart object, I still have a selection here. Now, right off, I can use my bar right here, since it's so convenient, to click on the layer mask button. Layer mask, once again, is all about non-destructive transparency. So if I click on that, bam, you'll see all of a sudden, uh, it's now causing this uh, to happen right here. A layer mask is just a way to non-destructively just hide pixels on a layer and reveal other pixels. So it's a way of erasing or cutting out and yet you're not even damaging any part of that photo, which is pretty cool. So there it is right there. Now, of course, this is still messed up. So the if I'm gonna do this the lazy way, what I'm gonna do is make sure the mask is selected. So this is the actual map that tells the layer you know, what to hide and what to reveal. So I'm just gonna select that mask, layer mask, and go up to my properties right here and click on select and mask. And if I do that, that's gonna bring me into this whole other mode right here. So select and mask was introduced uh, quite a number of years ago, and it also has a lot of superpowers in it for everyday people who just need to get something done, like removing backgrounds and things like that. Right away, there is at the very top, we have the view right here, which allows us to view our selection against any background. I'm gonna choose black. Uh, and I'm on black right now. And then I'm gonna go to opacity and just kind of bring that up so I can see, you know, really all the flaws around her hair right there. Now there's several things that I can select here. This is not really about select and mask. I kind of want to just get through this right now. There's going to be other tutorial videos that I'm happy to go through each and every feature. But what I'm going to do right away, I'm going to leave this on color aware right here. Um, I could bring up edge detection, which allows it to automatically kind of look at the edge of her hair. That's okay. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Um, I'll bring that back. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the left-hand side and I'm gonna grab this tool right here. So this is the Refine Edge Brush Tool. So this was made for things like hair or very complex elements uh, to basically tell Photoshop what you want versus what you don't want. And uh, so if I just take this brush right here and say, you know what, I want you to focus on this region right here and just kind of go over that little area, you'll see it kind of pulls that out. It kind of redraws elements back in. You're just kind of going half on, half off, and you're just kind of pulling that out, and you'll see it's like making that edge much nicer than it was before. So you see I go along her hair or any of the problem areas, and it pretty much just kind of cleans that up. You'll see right here, I'm just gonna kind of brush the hair down in the problem areas right there. Let it go, it's a little rough down here. Obviously there was a lot of flies right, flyaways right there. There's a little bit on her hand right here. Excellent, and you'll see it's now removing a lot of those little elements. Is it perfect? No, this is gonna be rough, but now what I'm gonna do, just to show you generative fill, is I'm pretty much gonna create a background that's very similar to her, okay? So basically, I'm gonna go in here, this is beautiful, uh, excellent. And you'll see obviously the edge is pretty rough as well here. You could run along the edge and sometimes it helps a little bit, sometimes not as much, but that helps kind of smooth out some of the issues we got going on here. Not all everything, but some of the issues. All right, now that I have 
this particular selection, probably the last thing I'm gonna do just really quickly is just go down here to the bottom. Usually it's kind of wrapped up here. Uh, the disclosure arrow is just kind of folded up. So I'm gonna click on that disclosure arrow and click on decontaminate colors. And that helps to really kind of decontaminate some of those lighter edges going around there. And it just cleans it up a little bit more. Uh, we can go ahead and up things like smooth if you feel like it's a little rougher around the edge. Uh, and you just have to be a little careful because it smooth is at the cost of accuracy. And so it can bring in more of that background that you don't want. Uh, to come in. So you do have to be a little bit careful about using food uh, like smooth and even feather and things like that. So uh, if you want to solidify the edge a little more, you could use contrast. If you want to cut edge pixels off, you can bring down shift edge as well. So there's a lot of kind of cool things uh, inside of here. Now, like I said, this could be a little problem inside of here because there's some things that I'm not seeing, but I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, right now. And you'll see it automatically makes a duplicate and then adjusts that mask right there. And so there it is. Now this does, this is not a smart object anymore, um, but this is, so we still have the original intact right here. So not a big deal. It's all good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, select the bottom here. Now, why am I selecting the bottom? Well, right now, just to keep things clean, because, uh, you know, if there's a first timer uh, watching this video, I don't want them to get confused. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the original right there. Yes, that is actually horrific right there. You never really want to get rid of your original, but I'm just going to clean it up just so I have this one layer here. And what I'm going to do is create a brand new layer in the background right here. And I'll just call this uh, background. Keep it real simple. There it is. So there's my background right there. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to fill this uh, full of a custom background, a unique background. Um, and then go command A, just like that. Right on the contextual taskbar right here, you'll see right away generative fill. So if I click on generative fill right here, right away, you'll see it says, describe what you'd like to generate or feel free to leave this blank, okay? I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna type in uh, cyberpunk city with neon signs, okay? And I'm actually gonna go back to the beginning and type in photo uh, realistic even though most likely it will not be photorealistic, but sometimes it gives it just a little bit more kind of shading and, you know, kind of makes it look a little cooler. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click generate and that's gonna generate and fill that background using artificial intelligence. So if I click on generate right there, it's gonna go through, go through, go through. We'll see how bad or good this is. Sometimes it could be pretty bad, sometimes it could be good. Uh, most of the time it makes it interesting, there we go. So as you can see, here is my background. Now that's not the only background I have. Uh, you'll see over here, we have uh, some variants, some different choices right here. And so if I wanted to regenerate, once again, all I have to do is just click the generate button again to get a whole new set of, uh, a whole new set of variations right there. So once again, I'm doing it again. Okay, there it is. Click here. Once again, just trying to get, you know, uh, an interesting variation. Now, if you want to change something up, I could say city, something like maybe alleyway. Okay, alleyway. Just, uh, boom, just like that. City alleyway with neon signs. Let's see what that does. If we shake it up a bit here. And you'll see the background's already kind of, you know, using those same types of colors that are reflected in her glasses and stuff like that. Uh, so there it is right there. So let's say uh, I'm actually okay with uh, one of these here. You know what? I'll just kind of go with something like that with a little pink in the background right here. Awesome. I could use uh, some of the new AI filters as well. So for example, if I were to take her, I actually want to make her a smart object. So if any of you are using just 
you know, random filter effects up here and you're not making your items a smart object, what you're basically doing is you're permanently adding that effect. Yes, you can undo it, but if you add the effect and you leave Photoshop, you will lose the ability to edit that effect. And so uh, for right now, so what I'm gonna do is temporarily kind of grab the mask here, drag it over to this layer, and then I'm just gonna quickly make it convert to smart object. Yes, I realize there's other ways to do that. <laughs> so uh, I just kind of did it the kind of rough way right there. But there it is right there. Now I'm gonna select the actual image on that layer and then go up to filter, okay? and to neural filters. So these are the AI filters. So we just used AI generative fill, and now we have the AI filters here. Boy, I mean, it's really boiling down to you can have no talent whatsoever, and you're ready to rock and roll with these things. But anyways, I'm gonna click on harmonization right here and turn that on. What harmonization does is it's sort of a cheater method to help your foreground object uh, kind of match a little bit better color wise with the background object. Now it's not gonna change things like textures and things like that, but um, this is pretty cool. So you turn it on, it is also in beta, so it's likely to mess up a lot. But what you do is you select the subject that you wanna color, and then you turn it on and then select the layer you wanna color it against. So I would drop this down and choose my generative layer right here. Click on that and you should see a little there we go. So you'll see it adds a little bit of light, almost like on our side of the camera, there could be some sort of neon. So you'll see you get a little bit of those kind of tones in our arm down there. If you want it stronger, we could kind of raise that up even more and that will add more of whatever they've put in there. Um, we could also change the color around if we want to. Uh, there are some other things that are definitely are not perfect about this, um, but right away I just wanted to show you just within a few clicks, you know, if I wasn't talking and I was just doing this and I was just clicking around, this would, I mean, this would be all of but a few seconds, right? And then I could go ahead uh, if I just say okay right now. And so once again, all there would be would be maybe to create some type here. I could go in here, click in there, and you got some very interesting type there. I'll just grab uh, Amboy right there. I'll just say, uh, you know, embrace the future. Awesome, uh, there it is. And I'm just gonna kind of bring this up. There we go, awesome. Um, now with stuff like this, I used to, you know, I really like more uh, kind of obstructive, kind of creative, art and stuff like that. So what I'd probably do is probably take this and then drag it below my subject right there. So she kind of, uh, you know, kind of obstructs a little bit of the type. I would even add like little shadows and there could be other things that I could really get into on that. Anyways, uh, there it is. Uh, that's a little bit about generative fill. Uh, hopefully you liked uh, this tutorial right here. Uh, if you like this, I am going to try to, once again, uh, publish more. So, once again, if you want to stick with me, uh, please subscribe uh, to my channel. And, uh, once again, have a great day.